video. This one is a fight on UFC 278. This fight is Daniel Lacerda versus Victor Altamirano. The first fighter is Daniel Lacerda. In his last fight, he fought against Francisco Figueredo. And he's notorious for getting knee bar and being in extreme agony and pain. In his fight against Francisco, he was doing decent on the feet, but then he decided to take Francisco down. But then out of nowhere, Francisco was able to attack his knee and get the submission. Daniel's fight before that was against Jeff Molina. Jeff Molina is not a bad fighter. Jeff Molina is 11 and two, and he's won 10 fights in a row, and he's undefeated in the UFC. So this is not the worst loss to have. Jeff was able to drop him and get the ground to pound. This is one of the worst stoppages I've ever seen because Daniel took a lot of damage and the referee allowed him to take damage excessively for like over a minute. But what's weird with Daniel Lacerda is the fact that if you look at his record, he's 11 to three. Five of his wins come by knockout, six of his wins come by submission, and he has no decision wins. So you would look at his stats, his numbers, and you would think that he's just a killer. But when you look at some of his opponents he fought before the UFC, most of them have losing records. Either their record is like five and five or eight and eight, either it's 500 or it's just like 18 and 19, nine and 12. So Daniel looks like a world beater against guys on a lower level. But then when he steps into the octagon, he's getting embarrassed. When you look at some of his UFC prior fights, He's dangerous on the bottom, he's dangerous on the top. He has the wrestling, he has the takedowns, submissions, the striking. But then he doesn't show none of that in his UFC fights. He's also real wild with his striking and his hands. He has a lot of finishes in less than two minutes. If you go and look at the actual fight, he's walking forward and just throwing wild punches and catching his opponents and finishing them. His opponent is Victor Altamirano. Victor is 10-2 in the UFC. And one win by knockout, four wins by submissions, and five wins by decision. Victor's in the same category as Daniel because they both have a bunch of finishes outside of the UFC, but when they step foot in the UFC, they're not close to getting no finish. Yeah, Victor is tough. His last two fights were really close. I think he lost both of them. He won one out of the two fights in the UFC, but I think he lost both. His last fight was against Carlos Hernandez. Carlos was able to take him down over and over again. It looked like on the feet, it was extremely close, but it looked like Victor had the edge with the striking, but then he'll give up a takedown and lose the round. Yes, he ended up losing the fight by a split decision, but I think the fight should have been a unanimous loss. He had moments with the striking, but because he couldn't stop the takedowns, he wasn't able to make the fight close enough to win. His fight before that was against another Carlos Candelario. It's weird because Victor is a very slow starter. And the funny thing is Carlos Candelario is a very fast starter, but he started to slow down. This is a fight that Victor won, but I don't think he won this fight. The first round wasn't even close. He got taken down, controlled, manhandled in the first round. In the second round, he had success on his feet, but then again, he got taken down again and controlled. But then at the end of the second round, he was able to stand up and have a little bit more success on the feet, but it looked like he still lost the second round. The commentators were even saying that Victor was down and he needed to finish in the third round. The third round, clearly Victor was able to win against Carlos Candelaria. Victor clearly won third round by far. It looked like he lost the first two rounds. But both of these fighters, Victor and Daniel Lacerda, neither one of these guys have impressed me in the UFC. Yes, Victor was able to go the distance a couple times and make the fights close. I, mean, I don't think he won either fight. And he's not showing the submissions and the takedowns he did before the UFC because before the UFC, he was able to take his opponents down, control them, submit them. He was even dangerous on his back. He took some opponents down in the UFC, but they were able to pop back up. One thing that impressed me with Victor is his kicks. On the outside, he's able to throw body kicks, leg kicks, and he also has a left beautiful body punch, but he doesn't really use his kicks the way he's supposed to. I think this fight, as crazy as it may sound, I think this fight is gonna come down to who has the better ground game. This fight is definitely is gonna hit the ground, and they both have a bunch of submissions. Some of these fighters, they're world beaters, and when they step foot in the UFC, they can't win not one fight. And Daniel, he's 0-2 in the UFC. This fight, I'm picking Victor Altamirano by a three-round decision.